Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago I filled for you guys a room tour and I'm not sure if any of you noticed but I have a lot of empty space on the wall above my bed. So for a while I've been thinking that I wanted to do something with that space and I've been really into um, gallery walls lately. Just looking at people's walls and prints and yeah so I decided I wanted to make my own gallery wall. And because prints can be kind of expensive as can frames uh, I decided to make my own art, write my own prints, and just come up with my own ideas of ways to show myself through this gallery wall. So if you guys are interested in how I made the art for my own gallery wall, and if you want to learn some tips on making your own gallery wall, just keep watching. Okay, for project number one, we're going to be making a lipstick print, and for this, you're just going to need a piece of cardstock paper and your favorite lipsticks. I'm using ColourPop's Matte X Lippy Sticks. I'm using about eight colors. As you can see here, all I'm really doing is putting on a layer of lipstick and then kissing the paper to leave a lipstick mark. And I do this a couple times with the same color because you don't get that much color payoff after you kiss it around two times. So you're gonna wanna put on a couple layers of lipstick in between. And we're just gonna do this for all eight colors of lipstick until the paper is about filled to what I want it to be. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. Moving on to project number two, we're gonna be doing a abstract kind of color print. And we're gonna be using watercolor paper and these sponge brushes you can get from Michaels for about five bucks for 16. And around four acrylic paints. I wouldn't recommend any more because then it might get too messy. And you're going to need this little paint place where you can put paint in and a little bowl of water and paper towels. It's also optional if you want to use some kind of glitter. I use my nail polish stripers to add some glitter to the painting. So here I am putting the colors into the little circles and I'm also dampening the sponge brushes. You don't want them to be soaked, but you don't want them to be dry because you want them to be a little bit damp to help the colors blend together. So basically all you're gonna do is grab a color, I usually start with a medium color, and you're just going to brush it on using the sponge brushes until you have it all covered to your liking and as blended as you want it to be. Just in case you're wondering, the one that I actually have hanging on my gallery wall uses different colors than this, but I had done that one before deciding to make this video, so I decided to use different colors for this one. You could totally leave the painting like this, but I decided to add in some glitter with my nail polish stripers, just putting them every here or there, you know, not really having an idea, just adding little bits here and there.
And this is what this looks like when it's all done. Moving on to project three, this is the easiest project out of all of them in my opinion. You're just going to need black acrylic paint, your same little painting tools, um, a bowl of water, some paper towels, and this child's uh, paintbrush that we've had for a while. You just want something that has brush, that will leave brush strokes on your paper. And we're using a watercolor paper because it's a bigger size. Now basically all I'm going to do is make a circle using the black acrylic paint and this paintbrush. You could do any shape you really want just so that it looks this like abstract and brushed on like an actual painting, you know. I decided to go with a circle because I like the way a circle looks as opposed to something like a triangle or a square or just brushed lines all over the paper. But if that's more of your style, feel free to do that. And when this is done, this is what it looks like. Simple and easy. Project 4 is a little bit more personal. It could be different for you than it is for me. But I went in with cardstock paper, four acrylic paints, black, white, gray, and this wine color. And the same paint, little tray, a bowl of water, paper towel, and these tiny detail brushes that you're going to see in a second. These are nail art brushes that I usually use for nails, but I'm going to be using to make small details and fill in the drawings that I'm going to make in this painting. And you're going to need like a pencil and eraser and stuff to sketch out the design first. So what I did first was sketch out a design of a lipstick, a lipstick tube, and a nail polish bottle. And I also wrote be creative underneath. And this is the part that took the longest to do was sketching, making sure I got the bullet lipstick to look exactly how I wanted it to look. And like never be afraid to use references for these kinds of things. I especially like looking up uh, lipstick tattoos or nail polish tattoos because they're similar to the style that I was going for and it really helped making drawing this more easy for me. Now I'm starting to fill in. I'm putting the black on the bottom of the lipstick tube. I'll be putting gray in the middle and I'm making the top of the nail polish bottle black, the very bottom of it white, and both the lipstick and the actual nail polish will be that wine color. And fun fact, wine slash burgundy is actually my favorite color in the whole world and that's why I chose it to be the color for the lipstick and the nail polish in this print. My camera cut out a little bit around here, but basically all I did was just add in some highlight lines on the nail polish bottle and the lipstick. And then I started writing in Be Creative with the black acrylic paint. And this is what this print looks like when it was done. I like it because it's really personal because I like makeup and I like nails, so it's one of the more personal prints in the gallery wall. For this quote print, you can either write it out like I did in the previous project, or you can go to this website called fontmeme.com, go to their font collection, download a font that you like, and make your own quote using Word. So what I'm doing here is looking through their fonts until I see something I like. I decided I liked this one called Star Mix, so I you click on that. And then it's going to open up to the font. And you can always scroll down to their text generator to see how it looks, but you're going to click on the red download button, open the zip file, open the uh, text file and install it into your computer. Once it's installed, it's going to put it on your Word, your Microsoft Word application. So you're going to want to go there. You're going to want to type star mix in, and then you're going to just want to type whatever quote or whatever it is that you want. Um, I put imagine just to see what it looked like and then you can go and make it look more like a poster. I went and started changing the orientation, like made it landscape. You can also then make it bigger and just make it look more like a print.
option two after this one is that you can search for free gallery wall printables and I went to this website called Little Gold Pixel and you can just find a quote printable that you like as long as it's free and just print that out and then you can have that one. So I went onto her website and you scroll down, she's got this whole thing of freebies. So I just scrolled for a while until I found something I like. We don't have a color printer at home, so I'm just sticking to black and white quotes. But if you have access to a color printer, you can feel free to do this and find color ones and even use your whole, make your whole wall out of free printables if you are, have access to a colored printer. So I'm scrolling till I see something I like. I like these Halloween ones. We're almost there, not quite, but we're almost there. <laughs> so I'm going to open that up, scroll down, look at the prints. I initially liked the bat one and was just going to pull that up for an example. But as I scrolled a little farther, I saw, I saw this print that says, I'll put a spell on you, like from Hocus Pocus. And I really liked the font of that one. I just thought it looked really nice. So I clicked on that one. It took me to this website. And you scroll down until you find the download link for this principle. Once you find the download link for the printable, you can just print it out and make that a uh, picture on your wall. Now it's time to hang up these prints. So the frames I got are these gold ones and black ones. The gold ones, the three of them I got from Dollar Tree for a dollar each. And the black ones I got from Michael's for $6.99, but they were buy one, get one. So I was able to get them. Buy one, get one. And those were 9 by 12s and the gold ones are 8 by 10s I also got two packs of these medium command hooks, command strips. There's nine in each one. Now these gold frames have these little photo stands on the back of them. So you're going to want to remove them before putting them on the wall. Thankfully, they're easy enough to remove. You just kind of move them around and pull them right out. Now it's time to put the command strips on. You're going to want to take around, for the smaller frames, I took two each and put one at the top of the frame and one at the bottom. You peel off the red part first, obviously, and then place it down where you want it to go. And don't pull off the back part yet. Wait until you're gonna hang them up to do that. Now with these slightly bigger frames, I'm still going to be using two command strips, but I cut them both in half so that I actually have four of them because these frames are a lot thinner in the back. So I'm going to put a one on each side to make sure that there's an even amount of hold on every side of this frame. Before you hang them up, you're going to want to take pieces of paper that are roughly the sizes of the frames and map out on your wall where you want them to hang exactly. So that's what I'm doing here, just deciding how I want each picture to hang and where I want them to be. And my center piece is going to be the quote one. So once I had them roughly where I wanted them to be, I then took a tape measure and made sure they were all even distances from each other. I made every picture frame an inch and a half from the center one and I made the top and bottom ones around four and a half inches inwards and the side ones around three inches down and up with respect to the frame. Once I've got that all set, it's time to actually put the pictures up. So you're gonna take off the black part of the command strips and it's probably best to have someone helping you, making sure that the pictures are straight. I had Erica in the background helping me decide if the pictures were straight or not. And once they're where they should be, you're going to press as hard as you can on both sides where you have the command strips. And then your picture is up.
Once you've made sure your pictures are securely in place, you should be left with something that looks kind of like this. I really like how this wall turned out. I think all the pictures, even the abstract circle, really represent who I am and my favorite colors and like a mantra that I want to live by. And I just really enjoy seeing this above my bed every day and getting to look at all the work that I've done. Okay, so that was my video on how I made my own gallery wall and the way I did my five prints. I hope you guys liked it. Um, let me know if you try any of these for yourselves. I'd love to see, even if you don't do a whole wall, if you just do one picture, I'd love to see what it looks like. So um, feel free to sh show me on Twitter or Instagram or comment down below if you've done anything like this before or if you already have a gallery wall but still learned something from this video. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.